he gained, and he gained is how a building will absorb uh, heat from the outdoors. So if we look at the process of heat gain, like I said, heat gain is the process of um, receiving heat into a building. Let's say we have a, a simple structure. It's a house, it has a roof, and it has walls. It, of course, would have windows and other things like doors and things connected to the house. And because of the materials the house is made of, it will impede heat from entering the house based on its conductivity. So if you had a house, this is the sun outdoors, and it is 95 degrees Fahrenheit uh, outdoors, a comfortable temperature indoors would be in a ballpark of 75 degrees. So let's say we had a temperature of 75 degrees uh, indoors, basically we have a 20 degree Fahrenheit delta T, which is the temperature difference from outdoors to indoors. So if we look at this, the house um, it will be gaining heat because we know that the process of thermodynamics is heat will always travel from a warm source to a cooler source. So it's warm outdoors, and the temperature uh, indoors hopefully will be cooler, which is 75 degrees. And so we will transfer heat from the outside to the inside. Now, the difference is, is that, like I say, the materials the house is made out of. We had a window. The window has very little resistance to heat. So in other words, heat can travel through a window very easily two different ways. Based on the materials the, the window is made out of, uh, glass is not very uh, restrictive of heat transfer, so he can um, it conduct heat pretty well. So conductivity is how it will absorb heat, uh, which we call the U value, and most windows and doors are rated by its U value. Walls, siding, insulation, uh, other type of building materials, like the studs, will have what we call a R value. The insulation is rated by the R value. The R value is how the insulation will restrict heat transfer through it. So different materials will transfer heat differently. So especially depending where the house is uh, orientated. So in other words, if the sun is, rises from the east to the west and is oriented up here on the north, southward. So in other words, on the south side of a house or the southeast or the southwest part of a house will absorb the radiation from the sun. So it can actually travel right through the window to inside of the house and add additional heat. So we have two types of heat transfer. One is by the temperature difference and how the heat will travel from inside to, uh, to from outside to inside based on the resistance of the material, but also certain things like uh, windows where you can actually have what we call a solar gain. And the solar gain is the amount of heat picked up uh, based on uh, how the radiation will travel through it. Of course, windows can be designed to have uh, reflective materials on it, what we call uh, high, uh, low E windows where it will transfer less solar gain by reflecting it back out the doors. But regardless, there will be some uh, difference in the heat transfer through it. So if we look at the, uh, the structure of a house and how the heat would come in, how much heat would come in would be based on the materials the house is built on. And the way we look at that, there is a formula that's called, uh, we look at Q, this is the quantity of heat, the quantity of heat, what equals the specific heat, which is uh, a number that is based on how he transferred through the material based on this weight and volume, times the area of the material, we're talking about the square feet or the square inches, times its delta T, 
which is the temperature difference between inside and outside of the material. So you want to know the amount of heat to use based on specific heat. And the specific heat is the amount of heat a substance can absorb or increase the temperature by one degree for every pound of that material or its square feet of that area. So if we know the square feet, we know the temperature difference, and we know the specific heat, we can determine how much or the quantity of the heat energy been transferred from outdoors to indoors. The importance of that, we can determine how large the air conditioning equipment need to be sized to be able to uh, remove the heat that will be transferred in. Now, the thing is, is that the better the material will insulate and impede the heat from outdoors into the house, the smaller the equipment would be. So, we look at heat gain is bringing heat from inside of the home to outside. So, a lot of things can affect it. How well the house is insulated is one of the things. So, let's say we have the ceiling and we put insulation inside of the attic. Now, of course, we know the attic can get very hot in the summertime. It could be 130 degrees. And it can radiate into the house through the ceiling into the house to increase that temperature or lose or gaining heat faster than you would like. But by putting more insulation, we will be able to impede uh, or slow down or restrict the amount of heat energy entering the house. So that is very important uh, to save cost to save money to be able to um, to be able to uh, put smaller pieces of equipment in your house which would be more energy efficient because you're using less electricity so looking at these factors how we transfer heat based on the material based on its uh, the area of it every square foot of a wall or the window or door or the ceilings or the floors each one of these would transfer heat differently. So it's important for us as technicians and installers and designers to understand what is heat gain. And the heat gain, when there's a temperature difference, when it's absorbing heat, not dissipating heat, but absorbing heat from outside to inside. And as technicians, we have to understand that fully to be able to design systems correctly.